Intrusion detected. Initiating defense protocols. Genius built some kind of experimental machine that's drawing the acrid here and agitating them more than usual. Why would Kovach build something to cause this? You're asking the wrong scientist. See the quarantine room in the center of the lab? Right through the glass there? You blast your way in and put a stop to this mess. We'll keep him off your tail. Jim! Good heavens! 
How long have you been not dead? Oh, you're just in time to witness my breakthrough. Isn't this spectacular? Look at them all. I'm working on it, guys. Destroying the prototype was quite unnecessary. I'm sure I only needed to adjust the frequency. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. Hope saving your life didn't put you out. Oh no, I forgive you. I know carnage and mayhem is part of your nature, and without it, you just wouldn't be you. Or nearly as useful to me. You made a device that can drive the acrid crazy. Well, I would need to run more experiments to know for sure. Establishing a baseline of sanity for these creatures might be prohibitive of itself. Nevertheless, I'm glad the base was able to witness my breakthrough. What, you telling me you did this on purpose? No, not at all. But the experiment is still a resounding success. The acrid were influenced, don't you see? I've figured out how they communicate and I've replicated it. In the course of dissecting many varieties of acrid, I found a receptor that they all had in common. You might understand it as sort of a biological radio receiver, but you'd be stupid because it's vastly more complicated than that. T-energy is an unusual element with uniquely resonant electromagnetic properties. It's, it's more than blood and energy. It's how the acrid coordinate with each other. It seems I found a vibration frequency that puts them in an agitated state, which is of limited use itself, but just imagine what else we might be able to do with this. If I can, if I can find the wavelength that would calm the acrid and render them docile, then harvesting tea energy in the quantities we require would be a matter of simple logistics, such as designing a sufficiently massive slaughterhouse. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you in there. It's okay. I actually think better in confined spaces. James, a moment. Listen, I don't want to cause a general panic or anything, but just glancing at Coronas while heading in, she's in bad shape. The way the storms are increasing in intensity, I'm concerned it's only a matter of time until the structural integrity is compromised. I don't know, Doc. Seems like a pretty good reason to panic. You got any suggestions? 
I may. There are some tests I'd like to run, but I'd need your help. Wait for my call and we'll chat properly. In the meantime, I'm sure Braddock wants to catch up with you. The Acred are retreating. Looks like Delta Station's in the clear. The swarm is subsiding in the hangar as well. Whatever you did seemed to work, Jim. We're ever thankful. I'm happy to help. Just glad to be back home. Science is not an exact science. At its best, science is, is chaotic and unpredictable. Often produces a foul odor that you cannot scrub from your fingers. Nature has bottomless mysteries and, and contradictions, a fanfare of ironies and impossibilities. Male seahorses bearing litters. Mm. Frogs consuming their own offspring. Entire population infused with its planet's lifeblood. I've observed these things with my own eyes. I've carved the verities of truth from them with my bare hands. Any answer, and I do mean any answer, can be dissected into being. Any secret can be cut open when the scalpel is sharp enough. This is science, right? 80% uh, patience and 20% is cutting things open. <laughs> Until next time, Mother. Cool. What do we get to do today? Sure, I can bolster the hole a little further. Harder's better, right? Till next time, boss.
Portal at P. <laughs> you can never carry enough grenades if you ask me. Gail got you rummaging around for scrap, huh? See you around. Cool. What do we get to do today? Always a pleasure, my man. Hey, boss. Nice to see everything still running as smooth as ever. I knew you are still alive. <laughs> so where the hell you been? So, you fought a G-class acrid, fell down the side of a mountain, landed on the other side of Shaq's Peak, and somehow survived for two weeks before you got back into Comrade? Thankfully the rig was flush with rations and ammo. Lucky timing, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if you've got a good luck charm or you are one. And luck feels just like getting my ass kicked. <laughs> Jim, you know, I uh, take you at your word, of course, but uh, I'm sensing there's a little more to your story. Well, now that you mention it, there is this. What is that? Where did you find that? I'm sensing that you already know the answer to that. Don't toy with me, Peyton. What did you find? Why don't you tell me what I found? We're the first humans to set foot on this planet, so obviously I didn't find some 50-year-old Nevek base, did I? Did you keep your voice down. Is that really all you have to say? No. It's important you understand something, Jim. Keeping the first colony under wraps wasn't my idea. It's one of the terms I had to agree to for Nevek to greenlight this mission in the first place. Perception is vital to their interests. I go to great lengths to conceal such a debacle. Coronas was set to land far, far from the original site, but the storm forced us down here. Nearer to the truth than I could have even ever hoped. Hoped? Why would you hope for this? That's why. General Charles Braddock, commander of the first Neo Venus Colonial Expeditionary Force. Your old man led the first colony. Led it, and lost it. And he was never the same. Something happened here. Something you would never talk about. All right, so... You're here to what? Fulfill your father's dreams? Redeem his failures? I'm here to solve the energy crisis. And maybe get some answers with your help. Consider this an opportunity. A standing contract for further investigation. Not for Coronas, but for me personally. And I'll pay a premium for your ongoing discretion. So I get to lie to everybody, too? If a word of this reaches Nevek, they'll take back the whole operation. Put it under paramilitary command. I hate lying to the men, Jim, but it's for their own good. Trust me. See what I can see. By the way, Jim, a supply drop came in while you were away, and if I'm not mistaken, we got all the parts we need for a couple of major upgrades to your rig. 
One of them's a gas torch. I've got some contracts for you on the new pipeline, so uh, I need you ready to do some welding. The other upgrade? Well, I'll just let Gale show you that one. Man alive, Jim. I'm glad you're back. It was a long couple of weeks. Of course I told him you'd make it. Never a doubt in my mind. Oh, won't Braddock be happy? His favorite, back from the dead. LaRoche is happy to see you too. Hey, major, major upgrade time for you. Parts came in for an acetylene torch. Sexy, right? I can slap that together in no time. But the other upgrade, it's gonna take significant surgery, but you're gonna love it. Consider it a little welcome home gift from Braddock and yours truly. Your chassis is a Dynasty 2 swing arm. Platform compatible. All the access holes line up and everything if we want to fully convert. You game? I trust you, Gail. And if you hurt her, I'll cut your arms off. Sweet! This is it, Jim. My masterpiece. Your rig can now transform into a drilling platform. The suspension might feel a little tighter, and sorry about that, but you're gonna lose your mind when you see what your rig can do now. The Roche, no begging for one. Giving you enough chances. Fancy but useless, huh? What good is a drilling platform without knowing the location of deep thermal pockets? Shush! You're ruining the high. Jim, you were also officially upgraded with the Mitchell Industries oxyacetylene torch. Dual 150 oxygen regulators with a custom thermodyne cutting tip. It's a small flame for welding and cutting, so don't expect to melt the environment with it. It's pretty pyro-proof. Gotta say, proud of this one. Just check the valve reseals on the cylinder from time to time. And the Frankenstein rig keeps growing. Mmm, yeah. LaRoche, can I have a second alone with Gale? Da. Ah, I don't want to be here for this anyway. Au revoir. Listen, Gail, can you look at getting a replacement for this purifier? Uh, dude, this is like 50 years old. I don't think a modern day replacement would work with wherever this came from. But I can look at repairing it for you. Tell me he hasn't gotten better. Listen. Jim Payton, it is good to see you back. 
I think we all feared the worst for you. Now, I really must insist we sit down and talk after an ordeal like that. I mean, so much solitude, isolation, fear of death. I can only imagine. You didn't start imagining magic snow people while you were out there, did you? That was a joke, Jim. Seriously, make an appointment. We had an outbreak of weevil-sized acre and wiped out our potato stock. I know you like your mashed potatoes, Jim, so, you know, don't cry or nothing. reception during his speech on Tuesday, his first since the debt crisis developed two years ago due to the rising cost of fuel. Thousands took to the streets, protesting the severe austerity measures enforced in exchange for multi-billion dollar bailouts. The demonstrations proceeded despite the deployment of more than 6,000 police officers to lock down the Capitol. And despite the president's attempts to placate protesters with promises of further alternative fuel research, analysts predict the new austerity measures will drag the recession into a third year. Reporting for IVR, this is Suzanne Lee. Excellent. I hope you found the specialty ammo useful, because that's how I'm paying you. 